if I say it, you're going to laugh. You're going to say, oh my God, dude, this is, it sounds funny. But actually, like in my life, I think this was like a silent assassin. Whenever I wanted to do a big leap in my life or a big goal, this thing would just like shoot at me and go, no, 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 you're not going to do it, dude. You're not going to do it. Welcome to Happy Millionaire, a show about how to make profit with a positive impact and stay happy along the way. I want to talk about co-founders, right? So I'm in a bit of a unique scenario because it's not like I'm, I've am i got an idea of a company uh, or an idea or a business and I want someone to go with me on the journey. I've done a lot of the legwork. So mm. little recap, six years ago, started as a passion project. I've done podcast books, TV shows, built the brand, built the newsletter audience, built like, a, you know, uh, a trusted sort of resource for a lot of people. And now I'm like, I'm pivoting into uh, a tech, well, not pivoting, it's sort of like an addition to that existing brand is now the tech company with the app that launched six months ago. We have a, a slowly growing user base and the aspiration is to become that like headspace for healthy eating, right? And mm. so I've been thinking about getting a co-founder for a long time. Uh, and the reason why, if I'm being honest with myself, is because I'm, I'm experiencing that loneliness of like being a sole founder. And yeah. there is only so much that an employee or an agency who, who's currently building the tech product at the moment can come with you on that journey without actually having like skin in the game. The most successful businesses, something like only 15% of those businesses were done with one founder, right? Most of them were done with two founders, sure. three founders, or maybe even four. So I think of the likes of like Facebook. Facebook had many founders. I know Mark Zuckerberg's the face, but there was actually many mm. founders. The second bit of data is like, yeah, where'd you find that founder, right? You know, you're in a very unique situation because, you know, you were a doctor, right? You didn't, you weren't surrounded by tech people. So it's very unlikely you're going to bump into someone who can code or like be your, because I think you're looking for a technical co-founder as well. Because um, you're, you're essentially very good at commercial, marketing. Um, so you're looking for someone who's more technical. So yeah, you're either going to meet them at college or at work or maybe through your friend circle, right? Um, and like, that's probably where mm. you're like defined yours. So your situation reminds me of um, actually Instagram, right? So Instagram was founded by a guy called Kevin Sistrom. Um, hopefully I said his surname right, but mm. you know, he bought on a CTO, a technical co-founder a bit later. And you know, information's out there, right? Yes, Instagram sold for a billion dollars um, to Facebook and um, the founder kept 90% and then he gave his CTO 10%, right? Like. You know, I think you can argue it should be more or some people may say less, but, you know, that person did join on a bit later. So, you know, after there's money raised and there was a platform. So your situation is like that in my mind. It's like the question is, like, do you want to bring on a technical partner as like, yes, as a leader? So someone who runs that department or do they have the co-founder title? In my mind... And this is a question for you is like the doctor's kitchen. Do you bundle everything together? Do you put the books, the brand, the podcast? Because in my mind, you're already making, you know, you've said it on another podcast, you're making hundreds of thousands of pounds from mm. there. And now you've got this new um, app, which is like a new product, right? Do you bundle it all as one, right? Yeah. Or do you separate the tech product, right? Because that's what a lot of people do. Like, where, where's your head at with that? Because I think that's question one. To make me comfortable, uh, I'm separating out those two businesses. So the personal brand, Dr. Rupee, yeah. is going to be books and podcast. And yeah. then Doctor's Kitchen, which is the app, but also that will have the, you know, um, that will have the potential to grow into like cloud kitchens, physical uh, spaces like cafes, also yeah, yeah. D2C Love products, in-store products, supermarket products, all that kind of stuff. That's all like Doctor's Kitchen. So th there's actually a lot bigger potential in the brand, the doctor's kitchen, than there is the personal brand, but the personal brand currently is bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't want to get in a position where let's say doctor's kitchen is sold to, I don't know, Unilever or Nestle or a pharma company or something like that. And then Dr. Rupi is sort of bundled into that. I don't I don't want that to happen. So for me to be comfortable with it, it has to be separate out. So that's, that's yeah. the answer to your first question. What was the second question? I can't remember. So the second question then, okay. So if it is separated, right, then, you know, the question is, do you hire like a, a CTO essentially who manages all the technical operations? Because your jobs, again, but see your, yours is now interesting, right? You've got an app, right? So the Doctor's Kitchen app, you can go in there, you can see recipes based on your requirements. It's a great app, but then you've also got these yeah. D2C products. So technically the person you're looking for needs to have, I guess all these experiences, right? From a technical perspective. So they've probably done 
um, app development, and they've also got some experience in like um, essentially um, selling products within physical stores, right? Like having DTC experience. So the question then is, yeah, do you hire a co-founder? So they're a full partner side by side. Do you can have these deep, hardcore conversations, or do you just hire someone and then? You know, in that situation, when you hire someone, you may give them a few percentage points or you bring a co-founder and you might give you know, 10% and more, right? If you're asking me what I would do, um, I would definitely choose the co-founder route because um, therefore you have got someone who's side by side with you and you can have those really hard, shitty conversations and the good ones. Like, yeah, I think mm. what people don't realize on the outside, startups are really, really tough. Like, yeah, there's some people that go, yeah, it's like startups yeah. like eating glass, right? That's the classic one. I think the better one is like startups are basically like go like basically you're going into the sea with someone and you're literally getting your head dunked in and you're basically drowning for about two minutes, holding your breath and you suddenly get lifted back up. But imagine doing that with someone else, right? That sounds like a weird example. I'm just going with the flow, but like imagine you're my partner and we've both done the same thing and I head dunk for two minutes. I go, Oh yeah, Rupert, do you remember it went up your nose first and it came out that yeah, I've got this little trick, like, you know, or like, hey, that was really weird. And like you might have gone through actually I did this. It's like I know it sounds such a weird example, but just to have that chat of like these really shitty situations that happen to us, like, is honestly priceless. I'm blessed to do it with my brother. I'm just very, very lucky. Um mm. we have our conversations and we're both very different, but yeah, like, because the thing is, if you hire someone, they will always think you're their boss. So I feel the co-founder route is the right one because the journey's just starting for you, dude. Like, you've just, it's like, you're six months in. This journey's going to be five, ten years. Like, don't, this is a long journey. So to yeah, have, yeah. don't look at it as like a short, and this is someone that you're basically getting married to, right, for a good period of time. So mm. in my mind, it's exactly like dating. Um, you're trying to find that right person and, you know, hopefully you get into a relationship with them. Yeah, I think like there's um, there's a few analogies with like Headspace, right? So Andy Puddicombe is the founder of Headspace. He's the guy's voice. He's you know, yeah. the, the voice that you hear on the app and all the rest of it. Um, but he's very much like, if you ask most people on the street, who's Andy Puddicombe? They'll be like, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you ask yeah. them, have you heard of Headspace? They're like, oh yeah, no, of course I've heard of Headspace. So there's, there's sort of similarities in that respect. His co-founder, I believe, was technical. And that's sort of the skill set that I'm lacking at the moment. I'm a little bit more sort of like brand wary, marketing wary, content wary. Um, it's probably strategy as well, like as I've just picked up a few things. But the the other commercial aspects of like D2C and optimizing web pages and all that kind of stuff, like that's that's just not me. Is it more attractive for someone in today's day and age to start something from scratch, from an idea on a piece of paper that you're chatting with someone over, over yeah, coffee yeah. about? Or is it more attractive to go to a half built house and and you know help them build a mansion out of it? You'll find that out there is people that love building stuff from scratch and there's stuff that actually people like building when there's something there. So in my mind, you want someone who can still do the work. You don't want that person who's just going to manage and build a team out and like not understand what's going on there. So in my mind, you're looking for someone who actually doesn't enjoy actually building from like scratch. They're actually in that phase where it's a bit more, um, they're a bit more, they, they prefer when something's been built. And yes, there's loads of those. And Really, it's about finding someone who's also like passionate about your space, right? I think that's important. But the most important yeah. in all this, dude, and like, again, it goes back to relationships as well. It's like, you need to have values aligned, right? It's someone who really is in line with how you are thinking because how you see this business. So some people just want to have a small exit, do something quite small. There's nothing wrong with people like, you know, wanting to build have a little store, like small hairdressers or a small store. Some people want to build this, you know, billion dollar business. So I think the... You know, you've got a values thing and also like just their ambition needs to be aligned with you as well. So I think, you know, those are other factors um, as well to think about. But yeah, there are definitely people that will be pumped to to, to join you guys. And also yeah. the other thing that I don't have any experience of is like vetting whether this person is yeah, yeah. legit at their skill set. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like me, it's like you trying to vet whether... Uh, a doctor is legit or not or knows their stuff with having no background knowledge about healthcare whatsoever yeah. i could like if you if you told me oh yeah this doctor told me this and i'd be like mate you need to get another doctor your main job rupee is to interview that person and figure out the value side and their ambition in my mind that is what you mm -hmm. are really focused on don't focus on the technical piece because yes you, you you don't know what to ask there or you may do but you just don't have the experience yeah. right and that's cool but the, as i said the values and the ambition is the most important thing for a co-founder relationship the, then you then get your friends 
to then do the more technical tests. So for example, whenever I want to hire a technical person for one of my companies, yes, I don't I don't do it. I do the first vet on like culture fit and the values mm. fit, et cetera. And then I get someone else to do the other tests. And then also massively part, mm. massive part is references. Um, it's super underestimated. Like yeah. the problem is right now we, you know, it, the, the most standard thing is that people do references and you get given these references. So like they are literally like planned seeds of people you're going to call. And go, yeah, they're fucking amazing. So good. It's so, like, yeah, they're good. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but your, your goal is to find out st- the hard stuff from those conversations. But, you know, backdoor references are usually the best route. Um, and just make sure you even do the references. Yeah. Right. In my mind, like, yeah, that's like, the step-by-step structure on how to mm. find it. I guess the question then is just like, yeah, where is this person? And that's probably another big thread. <laughs> where is this person? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll keep you updated on that. I'm going to put some callers out. I did actually put some in my newsletter the other day. I was like, literally, I'm looking for this kind of person. I think at the part time, I specified product manager. So it was more of like an employee role. But I guess yeah. what I, I'm hoping for because of the whole sort of like, not just the loneliness element of it, but I, I feel like it would be good to have like uh, a partner in crime. The whole point of like starting your own business is not just to make money, it's to do things on your own terms. And one of the terms that I want to have is like making sure I'm happy and I'm doing stuff that I'm yeah, passionate yeah. about every single day. And so, you know, curating that that group of people around you or that person that you can sort of like go through the ups and downs with would be, would be awesome. So yeah, that's sort of oh, like man, the so reason right. as to like, why. Business is like, in my mind, it's not a one player game, it's a multiplayer game. And if you can have like, like to have, like honestly to do it with my brother's incredible. Like I've got other co-founders and uh, you know, everyone's like, all my co-founders are great, but I'm just using the example of my brother, but like, you know, the memories we've now got like together from, you know, certain mm. moments of like, I don't know, raising money to like a really challenging situations to mo- moments that we solve together. Like they're now like some of our best memories, right? You know, I think our goal right now mm. is to help find that, find your partner for, the co-founder side and if you're listening to this and you know me Rupi's awesome so please 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 do ping me <laughs> message me or message him yeah I'm excited let's um we'll bring up this topic again and we'll discuss the progress and if we have to up the buttons like literally when a Ferrari we have to go to the next gear let's do it and but we'll find that person for you yeah sick yeah yeah I think I, I need to do some more thinking around it as well but I'll keep you up to date with that um we got on a list all right so um yeah, this is a this is a topic that I was like, should I bring it up? Because I think it's one of those ones. It's actually quite a personal one, and it's like one that's been definitely this thing's been eating at me um, throughout most of my life. I didn't realize. I only realized it a few years ago. Um, and it's some. It's like a syndrome uh, I'm suffering from. If I say it, you're gonna laugh. You're gonna say, "Oh my god, dude, this is, it sounds funny." But actually, like in my life, I think this was like a silent assassin. Like literally, whenever I wanted to do a big leap in my life or a big goal, like this thing will just like shoot at me and go, no, 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 you're not going to do it, dude. You're not going to do it. And um, so it actually has impacted my happiness. Like I re- it's just something that has slowly been eating at me. Yeah, so this syndrome has been like what eating is at it? me. In my mind, it's like the most extreme level of like anxiety. Um, whenever I have something, a big decision to have, like my mind just goes off on one, right? Um, like imagine you go to like a theater show and like it's all pitch black and like I'm right at the front and I've got this massive light beaming on me and it's like everyone's about to start questioning or watching what I'm about to do like, so I'm just like scared to make a decision and so this syndrome is called spotlight mm. syndrome it's called spotlight syndrome so basically whenever you're about to make a big decision in life um, it's like you have this massive spotlight on you and everyone's watching and you're just thinking oh, you know what I can't be bothered for that like this just seems so stressful I have to deal with like not even my friends my mom, my dad my questioning all these decisions and why am I doing it it's just like the whole world is now watching right but I don't know have you felt this or can you relate to what I'm talking about M- massively dude uh, first off kudos to you for like saying it out loud and, and being vulnerable about it because I think most people would like read your bio or like listen to you speaking on previous pods and like this guy's raised hundreds of millions, you know, he's got three plus companies, tech entrepreneur, super experienced, got offices around the world and all that kind of stuff. It speaks on massive stages, has like hundreds of employees, if not thousands. Like how does this (laughs) guy have spotlight syndrome or whatever it's called? I haven't come across it before. And I've certainly had that myself. The thing that's helped me through it is Mm. the bare face reality that no one gives a shit as much as you think people give a shit 
And that yeah. exists across the whole spectrum as to whether it doesn't matter if you're an A-list celebrity or like some minor bro who's just started a podcast. No one gives a shit as much as you think people give a shit. Yeah, yeah. Honestly. And I've had this thing as well. It's like, you know, when I go onto a TV show and I'm doing a live cook and I might have, you know, what if I say something wrong? Or what if like I embarrass my whole profession? Or what if like someone watching this from the GMC decides to like take action and take my my qualifications away from me or my, my license to practice? You can really build things up in your head because mm. you feel like, and I'm going to look into the spotlight syndrome, you feel like you've got a spotlight on you all the time. Whereas in reality, no one's looking at you. No one really gives as much of a shit as you think people give a shit. Um, mm. That's sort of like, you can quote that if you like. Uh, and I, when you sort of like, when you remind yourself of that, then you can start having fun. Then you can start yeah, having yeah. a bit more freedom. 100% I realized that no one cares. I remember like, yeah, when I stepped down as CEO, yes, there was this one moment when, like, I probably had, like, probably, like, honestly, like, 50 or 100 people reach out to me. But I was like, yeah, you know, I just, you know, this doesn't feel right. It's the next chapter for me. And like, they went, okay, cool, that's it. Like, there was just, like, one line back and that was it, right? And maybe, like, my parents was probably a bit of a longer conversation. But just one conversation, they got it and moved on. Like, it wasn't that bad as well. So maybe if they do give a shit, like, a lot of people just don't give a shit. And that's true. It's like, it's actually... A small amount that actually do care a little bit, but then those conversations are so small that they just get over it because they've got enough stuff going on in their life. They just go, ah, let's forget about it. And I mean, it's understandable for, for people. I, I know the Stoics, I'm probably going to mention Stoicism on every single podcast there, but like I know the Stoics have definitely talked about the reasons as to why people feel that the world revolves around them. This is essentially what, what we're talking about at a very grand mm. scale, because we are the protagonists in the movie that is our life. On a daily basis, okay. we're walking around with our eyes and we're seeing everything from our perspective and our internal monologue. So it's understandable for us to feel like the world revolves around us and everyone is looking inwards to us rather than us being part of a much wider ecosystem. All right. So yeah, Rupi, one more fun topic, right? So as you know, like right now, I, you know, I'm in a very lucky position where um, I'm working probably less now. I had an exit of my business and now I'm like, you know, in the dating world, right? So I'm like focused on like meeting people. And what I've realized is that like the best way or the common way to meet people now is like these dating apps, right? And you've seen them. I know you've yeah. used them before. And like, there's this thing called like dating fatigue, right? So you just meet loads of people on these apps and you just start mm. feeling a little bit bored. Like you just, you know, you start questioning, is it going to work? I'm curious to ask you, like, obviously you've got, you've met a beautiful partner in Rochelle, like for the people that are listening that are single um, and, you know, they're trying to find um, their partner. Like what would, what's your view? Like, do you feel all these dating apps are the right route? preface i'm not hitch i'm not like a dating expert and like obviously i have dated and i've used apps and that's actually how me and rochelle met was through through an app like i'm i think people are becoming a lot more comfortable like ad admitting I mean, it's not really an admission but you know just being factual about how they met it's romantic to think that you'll meet someone uh at like i don't know a storytelling event or like uh, somewhat so-and-so's wedding or whatever but in reality mm. the most efficient way everyone's optimizing for efficiency here is like to go on apps because you're going to have like uh, a um, the opportunity of, of bumping in to like a random selection of people that you otherwise wouldn't have had access to the flip side of that is like it's like a double-edged sword because comparison is the thief of joy and I can almost liken it to social media, which is where like you go on social media, you're happy and stuff. And then you you, you see all these sort of like people doing better than you or like, you know, uh, you start comparing yourself to, to what you see and, and it can sort of like, it can chip away at your own happiness. And I think you have to use, if you're going to use apps, which most people yeah. do, you have to use them pretty uh, cognizantly of that. You have to be sort of aware of like, you know, the, the downside as well as the good side. Which app was it, by the way? I'm sure people may be curious. Which, which, let's give them a shout out. Which app did you meet, Rochelle? Uh, I, I, used, I used Bumble. I thought Bumble was awesome. Bumble was definitely the one for me. I know everyone's like going on about Hinge these days. And I don't know, <laughs> I, I never actually experienced yeah, Hinge. Yeah. I stayed away from Tinder. Tinder had a bad reputation there. I'm sure, you know what? There are any representatives of Tinder. I'm sure it's all right. But like, uh, but yeah, no, like I, I went in Bumble. That, that, that was, yeah, that was great. 
and on these apps you are going to be disappointed right i've had some cat catfish scenarios which well, we can talk about i'm like weird shit has happened to me um but like i feel yeah. that you're you've had some bad experiences and what then happens is naturally our memory will then keep that memory and go oh the next day it's going to also may have something bad and like so what suddenly starts happening i'm realizing when i sometimes meet women um is that like essentially like you know women are they've got that feminine energy it's really warm loving and their hearts are open but sometimes when they're having these dates i feel like their hearts sometimes closing as well because they're like oh man i've been yeah they just their belief in like finding love is sometimes going so their heart actually closes no i i, I know what you mean i think it's because they've probably had like bad experiences and everyone's everyone can like especially if you've been in the dating game for a little while and you've used apps everyone's yeah. got some horror stories of like you know being catfished or like being ghosted or whatever like there's a whole sub genre of like pissed off men and women yeah, yeah. For, 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 from the experiences of dates and stuff and uh i think like your energy as well speaks to a specific person who wants to have their heart open and so putting yourself in that space is really important for you to find your life partner if i'm honest mm. like you know you'll find a lot of those people are, are quite open i think going in there with like genuine curiosity is probably the best strategy for you from the way you've described like how you connect with people you just got to go with the energy and so with me and rochelle like she didn't fit the criteria that perhaps my family would have wanted to to see that you know she, she comes from an australian background her parents are abroad you know there's a whole bunch of barriers that we're going to have to contend with because of just the fact that we connected as two individuals. I, I would say put yourself into scenarios where you will meet like-minded people and um, just put the energy out there, dude. Yeah, yeah, you'll, yeah. You, you'll find someone, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, I'm and sure if happen. you don't, Uncle Rupi will uh, make some introductions and speak to a few families, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Good. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. uh, what what, what are the main takeaways from that? I was waiting for you. I was taking notes. I was, I was waiting for you guys to ask. Um, so the co-founder one, I, I found that like fascinating. So like obviously I've known you both for a long time, and what people don't realize about Rupi, he's a like fucking machine. If you've seen American Psycho, he's like, <laughs> I wake up at five a.m. <laughs> I go to yoga for twenty minutes. Then I go to the gym and do one and a half hours of HIIT training. I don't have my first coffee before 9 a.m. Because <laughs> uh, he's so much of a machine, he's, he's very good at doing things like by himself. He's very self-sufficient. Uh, whereas like I, I've been working with Jay for a few months and you're, he's also like self-sufficient and very capable, but he'll just be like, yeah, let's just hire someone, dude. And from what I understand, even before <laughs> Bliss Growth got big, like this was your approach. So uh, that, that's one thing just to like, yeah, like it's, it's a risk and if it doesn't work out, so be it, but at least you, you've tried. Uh, and then the second thing mm. was like the lens you use for a co-founder. So like most people might be using it as okay is it going to make the business grow is it going to be more effective that that's one way to look at it but another one might just be is it more fun like playing this multiplayer game rather than a single player game and if it's more fun like that kind of joy at work that happy millionaire vibe that's going to that energy will be in your business and you're going to work harder on it and people are going to be attracted to it um yeah so that that's the, the other way i was thinking about it and the third thing which was like a big insight to me is like rupee it's almost like Rupi is searching for this co-founder and the, just some of the things you were saying, it's like, okay, does that person exist? And they're solving like the doctor's kitchen problem. But like in Bliss Growth, we see all these um, people in like dead end jobs, like very technically capable and the company they work at doesn't have any mission or purpose. Whereas like, I think one of the huge strengths of the doctor's kitchen is you've got your values and purpose really aligned uh and yeah like um yeah just um yeah i think put the effort in and find that person and yeah you'll you're, you're definitely uh yeah you'll definitely get there uh and then with spotlight syndrome um again maybe people are watching this episode and they're thinking okay 
like Jay's got it all solved, but they don't know what it was like two hours ago when we're about to record, like Rupi's just chilled and Jay's like <laughs> delaying it for about 10 minutes while he's like, uh, I need uh, like this much drink of water and oh, my mic's not just right. And like, so um, yeah, the, these things like they're real and they, they can be solved with these simple mental tricks. So uh, yeah, really interesting. Awesome. Mate, I... Uh, Amit's uh, summaries are like the best bits of the pod. Yeah, exactly. I love it. I mean, <laughs> two hours, mate. Yeah. I think that this you might as well just take really over. Nice. I just want to hear from Amit. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, love it. Um, I love it. I love it. Awesome. <laughs> All right, great session, Amit. That was a Thanks great. That, that was a great ending. Yeah, I, <laughs> genuinely, I love it. I, I think uh, Amit basically turns the forty-five minutes of fluff into something practical. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just like we should just say at the start, like forget <laughs> this to forty-five. Just get right to the end. Listen to Amit's rundown, and that's it. Look up, look up Spotlight Syndrome. Look up co-founders. Like do this questionnaire, and then yeah, get on the rest of your day. Like meditate. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Amit. Smashed it. Nice Absolutely one. smashed it. Cheers, Amit. You're a ledge, mate. Right, You're a ledge. Guys. All right. Cool, man. Good Thank episode. You. Good, good episode, Rips. Catch you on the next one, pal.